So this is the uh, time in our service where we take some time to remember the death of Jesus in our place. Uh, we're going to take communion together here in a few minutes. We remember the, the death of Christ by taking a, a piece of bread and a cup of juice to remember his, his death in our place. And as we do that, we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 2 just to help direct our heart and our thoughts. So if you would turn to Ephesians 2. And everything we do here this morning uh, centers around God's word, centers around the Bible. So if you don't have a Bible, we'd love for you to follow along with us. You can just raise your hand. There are some men who would love to put a Bible in your hands. And uh, if, you, if you don't have a Bible to read for yourself, you can feel free to take this home, uh, read it this week. Uh, it's a gift to you. And turn to Ephesians 2. We'll be looking at verses 19 through 22. And as we celebrate this time of communion... Uh, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. We proclaim that our only hope in this life and the life to come is the death of Jesus in our place. And this is not just a, an individual proclamation. It's not something just we do. Obviously, we're not sitting at home on our couch doing this. We do this corporately when we gather. This is a, a, a proclamation we make as a church family together that Jesus has indeed died and been raised Every time we assemble in this church, we do this, this remembrance, this proclamation. So I just want to consider one aspect of this corporate proclamation. Uh, Ephesians 2, starting in verse 19, Paul says, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints, and you are of God's household. You have this picture here of those who are outside of God's family, outside of his covenant promises, outside of any hope on their own. And God has brought them into his family through the blood of Christ. Verse 13, it says that Jesus' blood made peace so that sinners in a sinful world, hopeless and helpless, could be brought into God's family. He goes on to say in verse 20, he moves from this idea of a family to now a building that's being built. Verse 20, he says, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. So this building, the, the church is what he's talking about, is built on a foundation layer, a New Testament apostles and prophets, the ones who, who had God's revelation given to us in the New Testament. And the cornerstone of this building, the cornerstone of this foundation is Jesus himself. So the idea here is that you have sinners who have been called out of a sinful world stones being added to this building as they, as they place their faith in Christ, as they have union with Christ. And, and you'd ask, okay, what is this building? What is being built? Well, verse 20 and 20, 21 and 22, he's going to tell us what this building is. Again, this is the church in view. And he says, in whom, that is in Jesus, the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together into a dwelling of God in the spirit. So the church here is pictured as a temple, uh, the very place where God himself dwells. Now, this is the church, the, these growing, this growing building, as, as sinners believe the gospel and are added to this assembly. They are a temple to the Lord. Think about the temple in the Old Testament, this place where, where sacrifices were given, blood sacrifices so that worshipers could come a place where God manifested his presence on the earth? Well, in the New Testament, the, we find out the church is a holy temple to the Lord. God's people gathered a holy temple. As individual believers are saved, as God works in their hearts, they are added to this growing building together, uh, set apart a holy people who are manifesting the glory of God, who are proclaiming his mercy, who are worshiping the king of heaven together. Uh, people who demonstrate by their lives the transforming power of the gospel. And we look down at this, written 2,000 years ago, and then we look up, we look around this room, and you see that God is indeed doing this. On the other side of the world, from where this is written, there are believers, sinners who have been called out of the world into God's family through faith in the gospel. And we get to celebrate this morning a membership Sunday. We get to add new members into this church family, at the end of the service, we're going to read a membership covenant, uh, really a, a promise before the Lord to each other 
that we are committed to one another, to living this Christian life together. Well, in one sense, every time we take communion, we do this. We put a, a flag in the ground and say, we are committed to one another and we are committed to Christ. And we've been called out of a sinful world into God's family. That's what we're doing when we take communion. We're, we're proclaiming the Lord's death, his resurrection. We're proclaiming that we are part of his family through faith in Christ. So there is a, a corporate accountability for us. A time to evaluate, evaluate our lives, to, to ask yourself, am I living like this is true? Am I living like a, a set-apart person, one who has been called out of a sinful world into God's own family, one who is part of this holy temple for the Lord, uh, worshipers together? Is your life in line with these truths? This is an opportunity for us to examine our hearts, to consider areas in our hearts. If there is sin that is festering in our hearts, that is not in line with the, the truths of Scripture, to confess those things before the Lord, to take communion knowing that there is forgiveness in Christ. And there might be some in this room who are not part of this family. The, the church is not just those who are physically gathered. There are people that gather on a Sunday, even in this room, who are not part of God's family. Those who are part of God's family have been changed on the inside. This is an internal reality. So you might be here this morning because a friend brought you. You might be here because your parents make you come on Sunday. You might be here because this is just what you do. You just come to church on Sunday. But you must know that, that going to church on Sunday, doing good things, uh, doing religious activities, those things do not reconcile you to a holy God. Those activities do not earn God's favor. God does not smile favorably upon you just because you show up at church on Sunday. God is not smiling favorably upon you just because you, you might open the Bible, because you might be a, be a good neighbor, be a good friend. God smiles favorably on his son, and God the Father smiles favorably upon those who have placed their faith in that son, in Jesus. Because Jesus went to the cross and took on himself the, the wrath of a holy God in the place of sinners. So that's what we celebrate this morning. We take communion. We celebrate Jesus' death in our place, that we have been made right with God. We have peace with the holy God. We are part of God's family. And if that's not you, we would just ask you to, to pass the bread and the juice by when it comes. And we would also plead with you to, to be reconciled to Christ. He is a gracious Savior. He is a kind King. You must turn away from your own self-rule and your self-love and turn to Christ, even this morning. In Christian, you have an opportunity again to, to remember that you are part of God's family. Not because of anything you did, not because of where you were born, not because of what church you grew up in, not because of your own family, but simply because God was kind to you. God was kind to open your eyes, to, to see the grace in the gospel. So we get a chance to remember again God's grace to us through the death of Christ. So men, would you please come forward, uh, serve us. If you are in Christ, whether you are a member at this church or not, but you are part of, of Christ's family, you believe in him as your savior, as your king, you can join us in taking the bread and the juice. Uh, you can take on your own as your heart's prepared. And then Omri is going to come back up in a minute and lead us in a time of pastoral prayer. So go ahead and, and take on your own.